Hey, it's Gio. Welcome to Maker Theory. On this episode, I'm going to cover timing for Galva lasers. This will apply to fiber, which I've got here, CO2, and UV as well. We're going to go over what the timings are as they're described in the manual. Don't worry, that'll be real brief. Then we're going to jump into the nitty gritty showing you a file that I've created uh, that will be downloadable for you to try yourself and follow along. And I'll show you how I get my machine tip top perfect and in no time flat. So let's jump in. Our first timing setting is gonna be the start TC. This is the delay that we have between the laser starting its mark and actually firing the laser itself. If you fire it right away, you're gonna have a time where the mirrors need to accelerate and you're gonna end up with a little bit of burn spot. If we put too much of a delay to compensate for that burn spot, we're gonna end up with a gap between when the laser starts and the mirrors start moving. The trick is to get it just right where the mirrors start moving and start getting up to speed and then the laser turns on in a moment where you don't end up with a burn mark and you don't end up with a gap. Our second setting is going to be the laser off TC. So this is where the laser turns off at the end of a mark. Again, the mirrors are going to slow down towards the end. So if we don't have enough delay, the mirrors are going to slow down and we're going to end up with a gap because the laser is going to turn off early. If we have too much of a delay, the laser is going to stay on after the mirrors have decelerated and come to a stop and you're going to end up with a burn spot. So again, our sweet spot is going to be where the mirrors just reach the line at the end and we turn off the laser just in time to not end up with a burn mark. The next setting that's going to affect our mark is going to be polygon. So this is the time the laser stays in the corners when making a continuous mark with sharp corners. If you don't have enough delay, it's going to round the corner short and give you a radius on there. If you put too much delay in there, it's going to stop in the corner and it's going to give you a burn mark. So again, the goal is to find that happy medium where you don't have too much delay, but not too little delay to where you actually get a sharp corner. The last setting that we're going to mess with is jump delay. This is the amount of time that a laser stops at the end of a mark before it goes to the next move. If you have a long delay at the end of your mark, it may try and move before your laser gets to the end and so you end up with a stray mark. If you have it just right, you'll end up with no jump line. If you have too much, you also end up with no jump line. It'll just take longer. Now that we've read and had the descriptions of what each one of these settings are doing in the machine, let's see it firsthand. So I'm going to use these black business cards. I think they're a good option. They're inexpensive and normally they come with your laser. If not, uh, I've got a link in the description below. Or we could also use some black masking tape. You set the power low enough, even a fiber laser will uh, burn marks in this. So this is another option. It's cheap. Um, it's really good for marking stuff off. Uh, also in the description below. And to look at our settings, you can look at, at it by eye. Most people will We'll see that as acceptable. If you want to go to the extra mile and get it just tip top, uh, you want to look at a microscope here. Uh, this one's a USB one. Again, description below. And in addition to these items, download the file that I have in the description. Do me a favor, hit like and subscribe. That not only tells me that this content is good and is helping you out, but it also helps YouTube spread the word that this is a good video. I'm going to open the file in EasyCAD 2 and describe what it is we're doing with this initially. We'll go ahead and select this and zoom in on our selection. Now you can see there's lines all around this. The ones that extend beyond the square are actually our timing lines and they're going to be on our first layer. These are spaced 0.4 millimeters apart from each other, which at 4,000 millimeters per second travel speed is going to be 100 microseconds apart. We look at these marks, it's going to tell us the time that we need to adjust in our setting, which is why I've set it up the way it is. Layer one is going to be our blue layer. That's going to be our hatch fill. It's going to be a unidirectional, no crosshatch. And I've got it set for 4,000 millimeters per second travel speed, 40 kilohertz. Uh, if we have the power dialed in right you're going to see three dots between each line maxed out my q pulse if you don't have uh, mopa it's not a big deal now for our timing settings laser on tc i've set at 500 i'm deliberately putting a gap on our laser off tc again i'm putting it really low it can't be a negative number so i'm going to start at zero and that should leave us a gap uh, the ntc i'm going to go ahead and leave alone that's our timing between vector lines if you're having issues with easy kite crashing you may want to bump that up I eventually changed that to 200, but I just didn't do it in this particular case. 
Polygon TC is going to be our corners. We're going to go to, to our advanced and look at our jump delays. For this test, we should be putting in a high number to make sure that we're not jumping before we mark. So we should have that at 500. I accidentally put them at zero for this test. You notice the file has them set at 500. Go ahead and leave them at that setting. From this point forward, if you're using Lightburn, you can go ahead and skip ahead to the Lightburn section. If you're using EasyCAD, you can stay here and follow along. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and burn our first test. You notice I did two passes there, and that's because when I did a single pass, it didn't show up very clearly. The left side of your screen is gonna be the top left corner of our test grid. EasyCAD starts in the top left corner, and then goes counterclockwise around. You can see where I left the jump delay too low on the indicator marks on the left. And then the two horizontal lines you see below that is the start of our blue mark. On the right side, you're gonna see the top right corner. So that's gonna be our polygon. And then the horizontal lines is gonna be our laser off. Based on the results that we have, I'm gonna make some minor adjustments. Make sure we're selected on layer one. And then I'm gonna change my laser on to 200 so that should bump us back three lines and then I'm going to turn the laser off I'm going to bump that up to 66 so we're about a third of the way past the second line there so that should put us back on to the closest lines quickly reviewing the seven tests that I did you'll see the changes on, on the settings and what they resulted in you'll notice that the first line for 100 and the last line for 100 on the tie on off really took more than 100 and I believe that's because the mirrors are slowing down or speeding up so once you get through that section it takes a little bit more time but every mark in between them will indicate 100 microseconds of change now that I've dialed in these settings I'm going to go ahead and hit apply to default. This is going to lock them into the default setting for EasyCAD. So whenever you create a new setting, it will reserve those timing settings. So this should apply to anything you do going forward. Note any existing settings will have to be manually changed. Our next is jump delay. To do that, we're going to open a new file here. Select this and do my zoom pick. So now we can get a good clear view. I left the timing marks at the 100 mark. It doesn't really apply on these because they're so close together. The mirrors accelerate and decelerate in such a small amount of time. You don't get up to full speed until you get into the larger marks. To start, we'll select the blue setting and we're gonna notice that the timing is off. So to fix that, I'm gonna go ahead and click use default parameter and that's gonna pull in the settings that we just saved to our default. So you can see that change, and that's what we had uh, in our last testing. We can take a look at the layer zero, and that setting's off. Now, I don't want to use the default because I want to keep that speed and that power and that frequency. So I'm going to go ahead and switch those manually and hit apply. Hit advance. I'm going to keep the jump delay high on those because I, I don't want it jumping early like we saw in the other one. Now switching back to layer one, deselect the default here. I'm going to go into advanced and then I'm going to take my jump delays and put them down at zero for the blue mark because we want to see if we need any delay at all. For this file, I noticed that because there's so many tick marks, I had issues with consecutive marks that I went ahead and turned the NTC up to 200 just to make sure that I wasn't having any issues with EasyCAD crashing because it was getting pretty laggy. So you'll notice that is in the new file. So now we'll go ahead and burn our first test. Looking at our results here, you can see the stray marks from the lack of jump delay. So we're gonna go and select our blue setting and then we're gonna hit advanced. Now I'm just going to go ahead and put in 50 because we're halfway between the marks. I know the marks aren't actually 100 now and we're going to hit apply and we're going to do a second test. Again, you'll see the stray marks. It's looking a little bit better, but they're still there. So now I'll go through a series of changes in 50 microsecond intervals and you'll see that we start seeing the jump delay mark decrease until we get to a final setting of 150 microseconds and see it there's a uh, no mark there now if we wanted to test further we could dial it back slightly uh, maybe go back to like a 140 or 130 and see how that works but in this case I'm not going to do that I'm going to go ahead and hit apply to default and now that's going to save in our default setting for any time we make a new setting with these new delay settings we can go ahead and run the initial test again and we'll see how much cleaner it shows up now and that'll be it for our EasyCAD setup if you want to stick around for light burn that is next otherwise you can jump ahead to the conclusion and closing
All right, opening the file in Lightburn, uh, if you end up with a blank screen like this, what happened is I used a 300 millimeter lens. So it's actually off your screen. So what you can do is hit Control A or Command A to select all, and then P for page center. And that'll bring your mark down to the center of your screen. I just showed this because that's what can happen if you have a smaller lens. I'm actually using my 300 lens, so I'm going to go ahead and use my 300 laser setup. So zooming in here, we've got tick marks on around the sides, like I mentioned before, 100 microsecond intervals. We've got our speed set up as the 4000, and we're going to go ahead and run this setting and see what we get with all the parameters set as described initially. If a single pass isn't clean enough, you can always run a second pass like I did. So you see we'll have a big gap here in the front that's uh, too much delay, and then at the end we have a gap, and so not enough delay, and we have some rounded corners there, and an incomplete corner where the start and end is. So we're going to go ahead and jump into our a layer one setting. Click on show timings and now we're going to be able to adjust things. So I'm going to jump this down to 200. This should get us three lines closer to the start. Laser off. We're going to do 100. So that should move us over one line. Uh, NTC I left in there just because if you end up with too many marks you can have a little bit of lag. The laser can sometimes crash. So I'll go ahead and put that up there to be safe. And then polygon we're going to go ahead and jump up to 50 to try and sharpen that corner. So now we'll double check the settings applied to both sub layers. We'll hit OK. And I'm going to go down here and deselect cut selected graphics to speed things up a little. So you can see here our second test. We're definitely a lot closer, but there's still room for improvement. So we'll go through a couple more iterations here until we land at 50, 180, 200, and 100 for our final setting. Let's go ahead and go to our device settings, see the wrench and the screwdriver, and then we'll put this into our delay defaults right here in the bottom right of this dialog box and hit OK. So that locks in those settings. Let's go ahead and go to our jump delay now. So we're going to open up our other file, jump delay grid, open. We don't need to save the project, that way we can redo this again if we want to do it on another setup. Here's again the tick marks that will represent 100 microseconds. They're not going to be exact because we're going such a short distance. The blue layer is our test layer, so that's going to be zero jump delay. Each line is spaced one millimeter further apart from each other to see if we need to change the distance for the max jump delay. So if you go to shape properties, you can see here I've got it set to where each one will go in order. So here's our first test with our settings that we had set initially. And you can see we need to adjust our jump delay just a little bit because we're going almost to that first tick mark. So we'll go back into show settings and see I've got my jump delays at zero. We'll go ahead and jump in 100 here because we're almost to the line. See how that goes. Look pretty good. So we'll go ahead and stick with that and change my default to 100 in device settings. And we'll hit OK. And that'll lock us in. Now that we've got those all dialed in, you are set to get some beautiful marks on your materials. Now we've set everything at 4000, but this translates to lower speeds as well. So I've marked as low as 1000 and should be able to mark lower as well. Uh, I've also marked up to 8000 had accuracy. Now this is going to depend on your head and what your laser manufacturer permits uh, in your software as not all laser heads are the same. Uh, again, I've used a 300 millimeter lens on this, so I've got a fairly good sized dot. If you wanted to get finer detail, especially if you're using a CO2, you're going to want a much finer dot. I would recommend using a smaller lens. That's all I've got for this episode. If you want to see some great timing in action, take a look at Light Source Engraving. He's got a deep etch video that we really hammered in and actually prototyped some of these uh, test grids with his setup before he did that. Results are phenomenal and it really did make a difference for his deep engrave. He's also got a photo video coming out pretty soon. Uh, definitely take a look at that and some of the previews that I've seen on that. Again, beautiful markings. If you're interested more about MOPA stuff, you can take a look at my other videos. Uh, I've got one that's doing these color charts like you see up here. Uh, they give you a uh, good direction on where to get started and uh, got more to come. Thanks again. Uh, like, subscribe, and uh, we'll see you in the next one.